Hey, my name is Ryan, and today I'm gonna to show you how I took all these pallets and some of this walnut and turned it into this table. And then I'll share some of the numbers with you. So if that all sounds good to you, please enjoy the build and I will chat with you at the end. Here we go, building another table out of pallets.
All right, let's go over some of those numbers. So first question on the board is, how long did this thing take? And as you saw, it was fairly labor intensive. So it took me a total of 120 hours to build this table start to finish. Next question on the board is, how much did it cost me? And what I factor into this is cost to my materials. So the pallets were free, they were just down the road from my shop, but the walnut costed me nearly 500 bucks. Then I factor in my sandpaper, my glue, my shop supplies, and my overhead, my shop rent, my power, my liability. I factor in all that stuff, and this table costed me $1,100 to build. And then for how big it is, it is 51 inches long by 25 inches wide. The top itself is three and a quarter inches thick, which brings the total height to 18 inches off the floor. The legs are six inches by six inches at their widest dimension. And then the base is 45 pounds and the top is 85 pounds, which brings the grand total weight to 130 pounds. Nice little zero there. And how much did I sell it for? The answer to that is zero dollars. I sold it for zero dollars because I'm not selling it. And two main reasons. Number one, this is just a fun experimental project for me and it's gonna live at my house. And number two, it's made out of pallet wood and I don't trust pallet wood, wood being wood. It's probably, well, this one's definitely gonna have some wood movement down the line. So I, I just would never feel comfortable taking money for something that I don't 100% know how it's gonna perform in the future. But if someone were to come to me and was like, hey, I'd like that table made entirely out of hardwood, what I would have to sell it for is well, at least that, plus whatever additional hardwood I would need to purchase, and then this times my hourly wage. So let's say I charge $50 an hour, 120 times 50, well that's six grand, plus another probably a couple grand for materials. So we'd be looking at maybe an $8,000 minimum table, maybe even higher depending on the choice of wood. And of course, mistakes were made and lessons were learned. I don't know if you caught it, but I actually glued a strip into that tabletop backwards and I had to spend a few hours fixing that after the fact, which was a fun time. Luckily, this table ended up being oversized from what I planned it to be. I wanted it to be 24 inches and I think I had almost 27 inches with all the strips in and even after cutting that one off, I still ended up with about 25, 25 and a quarter inches. So it all worked out and I was able to use that strip as part of the rail system which I wasn't gonna do rails on this. It was just gonna be the top and the supports, but since I had some material left over, I was like, ah, why not? I mean, the rails, they're not exactly structural. They're end grain and structure, so they're more just decorative. It's the legs that support the top, and the top is so thick that I think there's gonna be very little wood movement in that guy. It's, it's pretty sturdy on its own. But of course, I could always be wrong. We do have some pallet wood mixed with some walnut wood, and I did my best to separate out the hardwoods and the softwoods from the pallets. And this particular pile of pallets was mostly hardwood, which is why I had the idea to mix in some walnut. It's a pretty universal law in nature that you should never mix hardwoods and softwoods together. So like I said, I did my best to separate the two, but I'm sure there's a few pieces of softwood mixed into there. And well, when you mix hardwood and softwood, sometimes some cracks can appear. And so if that happens down the line, at least this table's in my house and not in a customer's house that paid good money for it. And then a quick note on safety. I do what works for me with the tools I have in my shop. If you know your way around a table saw, you may have raised an eyebrow at a couple of the scenes you saw in this video where I was cutting those big long chamfers. And then when I had that big wide piece between the fence and the blade, that is just asking for kickback to happen. Of course, I had a couple push sticks and I understand the physics of a table saw, so I was able to push it through, but I'm exposing myself to so much risk when I'm doing that. And there's better ways to do it. There's always better and safer ways to do something, but Again, I do what works for me in my shop. Please think twice before you go out and copy something you've seen me do or something you've seen someone else do on the internet. You just can't be too careful out there. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end. If you've gotten this far and you're not subscribed, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Please share this with somebody that you think might get a kick out of it. And what would help me the most in building more fun projects like this and bringing you more content like this is if you hit that thanks button on your way out the door. I would greatly appreciate you doing that. And I'm gonna let the blooper reel roll and at the end of that, there's gonna be a couple links to a couple other tables I have built. So thank you once again so much. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.
and I will chat with you at the end. Here we go. <laughs> My voice just cracked.